Hey Journey, we are in John chapter 12 today and I want to actually start in verse 23 where Jesus said, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honor the one who serves me. So we find Jesus here revealing to his disciples about his mission, why he came to earth in the first place. And he says that he came to actually multiply himself. He uses this amazing metaphor of a single grain of wheat, that when it falls to the ground, it's only one grain of wheat, but it becomes many, many grains of wheat, right? Because it, it, it falls in the ground, falls in the ground, dies, and then multiplies. And he's telling his disciples, that's why I have come. I've come to multiply myself. And he gives more, more uh, light, uh, puts, sheds more light on this down in verse 32 when he says, but I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. And that word for lifted up there in the Greek actually can also mean exalted. So there's really this cool double meaning here where Jesus is telling his disciples, I'm gonna be lifted up from the earth. And we know that that would happen not very long after this. He would be lifted up on a cross and be crucified. But that death that was usually meant to be shameful and, and humiliating and a, and a, and a way to um, show that this person was, was an evil, horrible person. Instead, that kind of death actually brought glory to Jesus. And we know that even that that's true it, everywhere in the world today, people wear a cross as a symbol of what Jesus did for us, that he died for us. He didn't die for himself. He didn't die for his own sins. He died for our sins. And I love, there's, there's even more imagery down in verse 35 that Jesus uses. It says, you're going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. The man who walks in the dark does not know where he is going. Put your trust in the light while you have it so that you may become children of light. So Jesus is saying that, hey, my mission was to multiply myself by bringing more people from darkness into light. He wants us to become children of the light. I don't know about you, but I'd much rather walk in the light than the darkness, wouldn't you? I've walked in both and it's a lot easier to walk in the light and much more pleasant to walk in the light. And so Jesus is using this cool imagery here of saying, hey, I don't want you to walk in the darkness, I want you to walk in the light. And down in verse 46, he says, I have come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. So. What we can really get from this passage is that Jesus's mission was to come and to die for us so that he could multiply himself and create more people that will be walking in the light, more people that be can become children of the light. And that's a challenge for you and I to become people who will be children of light. And he gives us some really important insight into how to do that back back in verse 25 he says the the person who loves his life will lose it while the person who hates his life in the world will keep it for eternal life so he's saying that hey if you really want to become a, a children a child of the light then you will follow me and put your focus on me so much so that in in relation to your love for me everything else in the world will be as if you hated it He's using that hyperbolic language to show how much we should love him. So my challenge for you today, Journey, is to be a child of the light, to, to walk away from darkness, to walk into the light that is only found in the love of Jesus. Have a great day, Journey.